TKO Boxing with Sherry Abassi, and today I'm joined by Australian heavyweight champion Justice Hooney. Justice, uh, thank you for giving me a bit of your time today, brother. I really appreciate it. I can see um, the nice backdrop out there in Cancun. How was the journey to Cancun, and how have you settled in for fight week? Yeah, it was, um, it was a long journey, but uh, you know, I'm glad we got here uh, two weeks early, uh, so we could settle in and get rid of mm. the jet lag. Um, I'm feeling good now, and the training's going well, so yeah, just putting the final touches on uh, this preparation, and just can't wait for Saturday night. Excellent. Justice, I, um, when I was looking at your uh, your box wreck and your career, I think it was three years on the 22nd that you've had the, the Australian heavyweight title. Is that correct? So yeah, yeah, you've correct. been champ for a while. Um, what is the plan for you in terms of your progression? Are, are you looking to defend that title as, as many times as you can? Or are you just looking to hold it for a little while now and then gradually just work up through the levels onto the more international stage? Yeah, I'm just trying to work my way up to... Um, know, getting in the top 10 and being able to put myself in a position where I can fight for a um, world title or any of those guys in the top 10. So, you know, I just got to take it one fight at a time and um, hopefully my time will come soon. Definitely. And Justice, um, you've obviously come from a fairly successful amateur background. Um, having won some medals along the way. Unfortunately, I, I read up that you had an injury that ruled you out of the Olympics. Do you have any sort of like regrets about that or anything you look back on? Or are you more just focused on moving forward as a pro now? Yeah, that's it. I'm just focused on moving forward. Um, I've got no regrets, you know. And everything happens for a reason. And um, I just have to look at it as it is what it is. And, you know, just continue um, moving forward and uh, looking on to the future. And that's... Um, for me, um, my goal is set out to you know, become a world champion in the heavyweight division. Absolutely. Like you said, for all you know, that could have been a blessing in disguise. Who knows how things could have ended up. So at least you, you've got a clear path now with no uh, sort of regrets, no looking back. The heavyweight division, Justice, at the moment, we've got some massive names and we're going through a bit of a, a golden era of the, of the recent times. Tyson Fury, Joshua's, uh, Wilder... Usyk, even someone like Gilles Zhang recently sort of announced himself in the last year and a half. Um, you're quite young. You're 24. You've got plenty of time to sort of bed yourself into the pro style and develop your game. How much would you say your style now has developed since you were an amateur? Um, I think it's come a long... Uh, I, I think it's come a long way, you know, um, especially from the amateur style. There's a lot of um, just scoring... Uh, the scoring points, like just letting clean punches and then moving, whereas now it's more of a uh, aggressive style in staying on top of your opponent. Um, and you also got the longer round, so um, you know you got more time to do your work and um, to perfect things. So yeah, I, I feel like myself, within myself, I feel like I've come a long way since um, turning professional. How would you describe your style at the moment? You know, you've obviously got heavyweight pun uh, punches. Obviously, people hit so hard they can take you out in one shot. You've got someone like a uh, Usyk who's quite, you know, flowing and fluid, and he'll he'll box his way through things. If he gets a stoppage, that's fine. But he's not someone who necessarily you'd associate with a, a power puncher. And then on the other side, you've got your Anthony Joshua's, your Deontay Wilder in particular, someone who goes in there looking for a knockout. Would you say you're someone who is a big one punch sort of power puncher, or are you someone who's a bit more Careful and clever with how you yeah. work through a fight. I think I'm more, I'm more on that side. Like I'm, I'm more like uh, you know a flurry of punches, uh, not just a one punch knockout. Like um, you know when I put my punches together, that's when the stoppages come. Um, but yeah, I, like I'm not, I don't go go out there looking for that one punch knockout. Um, you know, for me, it's a if it comes, it comes. Um, and I'll, I'll jump on it, but um, I'm fine with just boxing and um, taking my time and letting it come to me. Mm. Probably uh, make you a better fighter in the long run as well, because some people get so excited with their power punching early on when they're knocking over sort of lower level competition as they go up the rankings. When they get enough into a fight with someone who can take their shots, sometimes we've yeah. seen over history, they come unstuck because they haven't got another way to fight. Yeah, so that's it. someone like yourself yeah. who's got that amateur background, that's probably something you can think about and sort of it keeps you in a, in a good place, keeps you humble as well because one punch yeah. can change it all. That's probably a good outlook to have. Um, I mentioned someone like Deontay Wilder. Now, 
I associate him as someone who's quite mean. He he always says before a fight, you know, I want to hurt this person, I want to do that. It might not be that he means it maliciously, but he's trying to get himself in a headspace to go in there and, and do the job. For yourself, do you view boxing as a sport and a job, or do you have to sometimes psych yourself out and get yourself in that zone, knowing that you're going to go in there and you know potentially risk your life and hurt someone else as yeah, well? Yeah, it's mm. a um, yeah. For me, boxing is a it's a lifestyle. Like uh, it's your entire life. Yeah, you got every time you go out there, one punch, one punch could change it all. You know, um, some like bad things have happened to uh, people that you know have been knocked in the head the wrong way. Um, so you know, when I go out there, it's like it's either you or me. You know, so um, I definitely don't want it to be me. I want to come out of this sport and um, you know still be healthy and fit in the head and everything. So. Um, you know, you got to hype yourself up and just get in that um, kind of warm. Sorry, the camera's just gone a bit. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Still sorry, sorry. You just frozen for a second. Um, in terms of, like you said, you want to leave the sport with all your faculties intact. The way you've come into the sport, you've had an amateur background. Can I ask how your journey in boxing began? From a young age, how did you end up getting into boxing? And what are your earliest memories of the sport? Earliest memories are, I just remember following my older brother around. Um, so we both played rugby league uh, mm. when we were young and then we started doing boxing for fitness at the same time. And then uh, just, I just kind of fell in love with it. And then uh, we had to make a choice uh, when we were around 10, 10 to 12 years old uh, to choose which sport we wanted to do. And, you know, I, I chose boxing at that time. Um, I didn't know what the benefits were, but uh, I definitely know now. And, you know, it's just a more independent sport and uh, you can rely on yourself a lot more than, you know, having to worry about uh, relying on the whole team as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful I made the decision to start boxing. And then, yeah, it's taken me all, all around the world and, um, you know, it's done amazing stuff for me and it's got me to where I am. Absolutely. So you probably made the right choice then uh, picking boxing over uh, sort of rugby and stuff. Yeah. Was there anyone in your family, as in elders, maybe your father, uncle, granddad, anyone who had sort of passion for boxing and maybe you picked up on that as a kid and watched it with them? Any sort of history of boxing in your family? Yeah, there's. Um, it goes back a long way, actually. Um, I, I couldn't tell you the full how far back it could go, but... Um, you know, my my uncle, my, my dad's brother, so my coach's brother and um, my own brother uh, and my older cousin as well, they all did boxing, so it was kind of a family sport. Um, and, uh, see, at the, at the moment it's just me left uh, doing boxing out of um, the family, but uh, I've got another little cousin coming up um, that's, you know, going to be something special as well so um yeah it's a it's a family sport uh, i guess and you know, i'm just lucky and thankful that I've, I've been given the opportunity and um you know to be put in the position that i'm in today and in terms of like your part of the world so australia areas like new zealand in recent years, we've seen a lot more sort of boxers coming through. World champions, uh, your George Cambosis, Jeff Horn, obviously historically Costa Zoo, Anthony Mundine. We've got some great fighters um, throughout history. And recently, a heavyweight, someone like Joseph Parker from New Zealand, who, who won the world heavyweight title, involved in some very big fights. What sort of motivation has that given you to follow down that sort of path and, and build a legacy and, and really push on and get those big fights? How much has that helped to give you that extra bit of desire to show that as, as, as even though there's, it's been a, a fair bit of time, it's taken time for Australian boxing to really push and start building into the wider world. How much hope does that give you for the future and, and seeing yourself in that position in the next maybe three to four yeah. years? Uh, I think it's massive just for the whole you know, next generation coming up to me that it's possible like, coming out of a, a small country of Australia and to be able to go all the way and make it to the top. It's 
it's just given us that extra inspiration to you know keep pushing because it is possible to um, you know get those big fights and then you know get your name out there and also put Australia on the map, which is um, how it's going at the moment. So you know, I definitely feel like I can do the same as what those other guys have done and you know put myself in that position to inspire others that are coming up as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, last year we we saw uh, Devin Haney, for example, against George Cambosis twice in Australia. So one fight is a big enough deal anyway. But we managed to get two fights with someone like Devin Haney coming over. So you normally hear America, you have to go to America to get to, to get the yeah. big fight and build your name. But in that instance, we saw the opposite where we had a defending champion or, or against another champion in his own right. And then an undisputed title fight twice in a row. Um, so even that is a motivation in itself. If you can get people at those sort of weight classes happening where they're coming over then heavyweight being the biggest division in boxing the most storied division that should probably motivate yourself and other boxers you know who, who are trying to make it in australia that it can be done have yeah. you ever dreamt of bringing a massive heavyweight fight to australia 110 percent like it's uh that's a massive goal of mine too is to you know um travel the world and take on whatever fights i can at the moment work my way up and get my name out there a bit more um and, you know once i've once i've done all the hard work and you know made my name for myself and shown the world who i am hopefully i can um, bring back a, a big fight to australia yeah so, yeah that's that's the plan and um hopefully we can, we can make it happen we just got to keep winning these fights and you know taking whatever fights we can get yeah, I mean, at the moment, it's just about building yourself up and your profile and getting those wins on the record. Um, back in 2015, in, in the UK, for example, we had you know a superstar like Anthony Joshua just starting off and him and Dylan White met for the British title and it was a massive domestic fight and that really kicked off a big boxing boom for the UK. And Joshua then went on to real world titles. Tyson Fury came back out of retirement. So Australia, you never know with yourself. If you have some guys who are coming up in, in the heavyweight division who start picking up some momentum, one day you could be involved in a, a massive domestic clash that then leads to an Australian boom. It's, it's not something that's impossible, even though it hasn't been something that's happened yet. That could be something you could look forward to. Or and further down the line, bringing over a big name from America or the UK to the USA. These things aren't impossible, especially with you know, you're aligned with DAZN and Matchroom. Matchroom have taken a much more global look at things. They're doing shows all around the world now. Whereas before they were mainly UK based, so it brings big opportunities for people like yourself, and hopefully that adds to boxing because boxing isn't—it's a world sport, so it should be shown in, in different countries and have big events all over the world. So hopefully for yourself, that that can be something uh, to sort of aim for. Um, in the region, you've got some some good fighters at heavyweight, especially someone like Joseph Parker, who's already you know been a world champion and been in, involved in big fights. Would that be someone down the line you'd potentially target just because in that part of the world that could be a big fight? Um, I think, you know, at this rate, you know, it's, it's still a long way off. Mm. Um, I, I've still got a long way to go myself. So, uh, you know, if it, if it happens, it happens. But, you know, we, we have been in talks with um, Parker's camp and I think we're just looking at um, helping each other out because, like you said, there's a whole world out there um, and there's plenty of heavyweight fighters out there to fight. But yeah, we've we've definitely had talks with the the party camp, and um, I think we're we're just looking at helping each other and pushing each other to make it to the top. Absolutely, I wasn't trying to get you to call him out. By the way, that was just a gen general question, just about the future. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not trying to get you get you in trouble. Have you ever had any sparring with any big fighters around there? Uh, sorry, in. in uh, in Australia and, and sort of the New Zealand region, have you ever sparred with any like Joseph Parker or any other sort of big heavy uh, fighters no, around there? No, I haven't. No. Uh, I've done rounds with a cruiserweight. Uh, I've done rounds with Jai Tyre. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. David Naika, like mm. those guys. But um, in terms of heavyweight fighters, um, like worldwide heavyweight fighters, I haven't, um, haven't moved around in the, in the ring with any of them. Them, yeah, but um, I'm sure my time will come. Absolutely. Um, and you, I suppose for yourself at the moment, this weekend is obviously a, a big moment for you fighting out in Cancun in Mexico. What has the welcome been like by the Mexican people? And have you have you had any conversations with any fans out there? Bumped into anyone? Uh, no, I'm pretty much a no name 
over here. <laughs> uh, you know, but that that gives me more motivation to you know continue working and yeah. Um, you know, it's a it's a pleasure to be able to fight over here and um, hopefully gain some new fans. Um, you know, and get to showcase my skills and abilities in front of a whole new crowd. So I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, hopefully after this fight, uh, I'll walk around here and I'll have some um, some new fans. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, if you can go out there and make a statement on fight night, this is how it works. You go viral online, you'll get a, a ton of followers off the back of that and start building your profile online as well. Um, yeah, so for this fight in particular, um, how how are you looking to approach it? And obviously, you don't want to give away too much of your game plan. But in terms of have you sort of got a game plan? Have you, have you already scouted the opponent and looked at what they do well and what they don't do so well? Or do you not really plan like that? Some fighters say they don't watch tape and all this sort of stuff. I don't know how you'd prepare for it. Uh, well, we've done our, our study on um, my opponent, Eddie Tabidi. We've done our study and um, we've looked at our game plan. But yeah, we've we'll just have to wait and see for Saturday night to, um, yeah, you just have to tune in to see uh, how the fight's going to play out. Absolutely. Andrew is obviously a former cruiserweight world title challenger. He was in the World Boxing Super Series. Um, I actually met him in Vegas back in July. I went to watch uh, Terence Crawford versus Errol Spence. Um, lovely guy. I'm sure you don't want to hear that because you've got to fight him. But, um, you know, a guy who trains very hard. I, I went to watch him uh, train in Mayweather's gym as well because that's uh, who he's associated with there as well. So he, he comes with a lot of experience and a lot of... Um, sort of knowledge that would have been passed around by Badu Jack, Floyd Mayweather, a lot of people in that gym. How do you counter that experience that he's got? And what do you bring to the table that can nullify him? Is it just as simple as you're the bigger man? You're younger, you're fresher? Or is there more, more that you can bring to it? I feel like I've, um, I've done my rounds around the world in the amateur scenes. Um, you know, I fought a lot of different styles. Uh, so, you know, it's, this style is nothing new to me. And, you know, I just back myself 100%, but um, I fully believe in myself and uh, I know myself that I can get this job done. So, you know, and, um, not really, I'm not really too worried about who he's associated with or yeah. you know, who he's got in his corner because, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's just me and him in the ring and, um, you know. Like you said, it's just... Pressing, we've, yeah. we've both done all the hard work for this fight, so uh, may the best man win. Absolutely. And just just before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you two quick fire questions. Um, I don't know how much boxing maybe you watch in your spare time, but if you can give me your three top fighters in the sport right now. Three top fighters in the sport right now. Um, your personal favourites. Um, um, oh, I'd to say, um, in a way, you'd have to be one. Um, Shakur Stevenson and yeah. Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford, the bad man. And so is Shakur. Yeah. So is, in a way, they're all brilliant, man. That's the beauty of boxing. There's so many different styles and, and guys that can do so many different things. It's hard to sometimes pick, but they are all great fighters. And um, just two quick questions for you. Your personal favourite fight of all time? Again, I know there's there's a lot, but one that you, you've gone back and watched over and over again um, and you love. Oh, uh, Otoro and Mickey Ward. Which one? First? Uh, I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> well, the trilogy... The one, where, the, the one where they just went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. <laughs> that's all three of them. <laughs> all, all, yeah. Actually, all of the fights. All, yeah, no, that's fair. Fights. That's fair. We can say all three because they were all-time great fights. Um, yeah, that was... Growing up and watching that, like... That was just legendary, like, for me. Like, of course. That was um, heart, skill, and, like, everything put into one fight, so... Yeah, that, that would be uh, that would have to be my all-time um, fight. Yeah, those three box, those three matches in a lot of ways cover what boxing is. The, the level yeah. of, of pain they put themselves through to be great uh, in those fights yeah. that covers it's everything. So crazy. I completely agree with that. And the last question for you, Justice, before we um, end the interview, please. Again, you've been boxing for a fair amount of time now. Through you know your teenage years, you've done the amateurs. You're now in the pros. Fingers crossed you've got a long and successful career ahead of you. When it's all said and done, what would you like to look back and say was Justice Sunni's legacy? What would you like to have people say about you when it's all said and done? Um, just that I was a, a, a good boxer and, you know, a good humble boxer. 
um, you know, done the hard work and you know got got rewarded for it. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, just just to be known as, known as a, a, a great boxer and um, uh, hopefully be um, named amongst some of the greats of you know this time. Excellent. I suppose credit to you for that because you didn't. You're showing you don't have to be loud mouth or someone bad mouthing other people and throwing tables about. You can still build a name for yourself and, and create a legacy just by yeah, respecting the sport. Yeah, yeah? Just, that's just, what you're hoping uh, for. Building my name, you know, through my hard work and through you know the passion I've given to towards the sport. So yeah, excellent budget. Justice, can I just ask where um, fans can find you on social media, please? What would your tag be uh, on Instagram and Twitter, for example? You can find me on Instagram at justicejphuni. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all of my socials. You can find me at that name. Um, so, yeah, pretty, pretty easy. Yeah, straightforward. Keep it simple. Uh, Justice, I just want to say a big thank you. I know it's fight week. Thank you for jumping on for uh, 20 minutes with myself. Really appreciate it. Um, no and hopefully further down the line, once you've, you've you've had a few more fights, we can get you back on just to go over how much you think you've developed and and hopefully look to the future, Justice. Yeah. So best of luck for your fight weekend, brother. I hope, hope you're the best. You, bro. Yeah? Thank you, bro. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Justice. Yes,